Hello everyone, I'm Steven and you're watching Steven Love Science. And in today's video, we're going to talk about one of the most commonly used immunological assays, the ELISA, or enzyme-linked immunoabsorbance assay. So before we start talking about the science behind this method, let's talk about what it is used for and how it is useful. Well, an ELISA is used to determine the concentrations of a specific antigen in a given sample. This has found specific commercial application in pregnancy tests and which a modified ELISA is used to determine the concentrations of human chorionic gonadotropin in women, an early pregnancy hormone. So let's talk about the method and protocol behind one of the most commonly used types of ELISAs, the sandwich ELISA. So the science behind an ELISA is actually relatively simple. So let's suppose that we're working in a medical laboratory and we get a shipment of serum from an HIV patient. And this person's doctor wants us to determine the concentration of HIV protein in this patient's blood to determine the effectiveness of his treatment. So to do this, we would start off by obtaining a 96 well plate that would look something like this. And this is actually the plate from my first ELISA. So to make things look easier, I'm going to give us a view of one of the wells in the plate. So here we're looking at a single well. And we're going to start off by having an antibody that is specific to the HIV antigen plating the well. So we plate the well with that. And then we take serum from this patient and put the serum over the well. Then the antigen or HIV protein will bind to the antibody. So the, the ter, based on the level of protein, if this patient has high levels of HIV antigen, a lot of antigen will bind to the antibodies. If this person has low levels of HIV antigen, not a lot of antigen will bind to these proteins. And that's indicative of the concentration. But we don't know that yet. So if we want to determine uh, the amount of antibody that bound, the amount of antigen that bound to those antibodies, we're going to need another antibody. So that antibody will then bind against the antigen. But something will be different about this antibody. This antibody will have a flashlight attached to it. The flashlight is really an enzyme or a biotin, but we'll talk about that as we move on. So this secondary antibody is then put over the well and it will bind to the antigen that is bound to the capture antibody or the first antibody that we put in. So once it is bound to the antigen, we now have a colometric reading because the flashlight is giving off light that we can put in our spectrophotometer to determine the intensity of that light. So if we have a high intensity of uh, light being put off by the uh, secondary antibody, we'll know that that meant that a lot of antigen initially bound to the capture antibody and that this person has high levels of HIV protein. If there's a low level of luminescent intensity, then that means that this person had low levels of uh, HIV antigen because not a lot of antigen initially bound to the capture antibody. So that's the basic science behind a sandwich ELISA. And that is why it's called the sandwich ELISA, because you have a antigen sandwiched in between two antibodies. And a lot of times, you'll actually find that you have more than two antibodies, and that the secondary antibody doesn't actually have the flashlight attached to it. And that's because it's very expensive to make antibodies that are specific to your antigen and that also have a conjugate enzyme or flashlight. So in this case, what you'll have is you'll still have a secondary that will bind to the antigen. However, it will not have a flashlight attached. And you'll actually then have a third antibody, which has the flashlight attached. But instead of binding to the antigen, it will bind to the FC receptor of the secondary antibody. And this is much cheaper to make. Another alternative is using biotinylated antibodies, in which the secondary antibody can either be specific or nonspecific, in which the secondary antibody will either have the biotin or you'll have a third antibody that will have the biotin. But you'll have biotin attached to an antibody. And then this biotin, which is attached to the FC receptor, will then come in contact with an avidin, streptavidin, streptavidin, for example. And that produces a very tight, high affinity bonding. So that ensures that you have bonding to the biotin and you're releasing a colometric signal that way. So in next week's video, we're going to go into the lab and we're actually going to do an ELISA so we can learn a little bit more about the hands-on and wet activities of an ELISA since it is a wet lab. So also, since the uh, holiday season is approaching us, uh, we have some Christmas uh, holiday themed uh, videos coming up. Everyone likes the holidays. So thanks for watching and stay tuned. And as always, please subscribe, rate, and comment.